This video is sponsored by PotonStore.com, the best place to get yourself some TCG code cards. They are compatible with TCG Live and you can of course get everything on the website for 5% off using the coupon code ZAPDOISTCG. This video is also sponsored by CardMarket.com. This is a European platform where you're able to uh, buy and sell cards to people all across Europe. I personally use it every single day and you can do it as well. And you can use the referral name ZAPDOISTCG to help support the channel. This video is also sponsored by YourPlayMat.com. Uh, this is a platform where you're able to, of course, create your own custom playmat. They have, of course, uh, capabilities to ship worldwide and you can get 10% off by clicking the link down below. So definitely check it out. Last but not least is Dragon Shield, the best brand to protect your beautiful cards you can of course uh yeah there's links down below for us and european people and you can of course get your best quality uh, sleeves uh, available as well as deck boxes and binders thanks so much for sticking around with the commercials i hope you enjoyed today's upload if you do be sure to let me know by rocking the hell out of the like button and uh, yeah let's get this video going What's up YouTube, it's Zapdos TCG here and welcome back to our TCG video on my channel. On this channel you get daily Pokemon TCG uploads so be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out and you can also click that little notification bell so you're up to date when a new video hits the channel. So uh, we're going to be talking about NEIC and my prediction for the meta. Uh, I am actually not uh, participating in NEIC myself, I already have uh, secured my world's invite, not currently chasing the day 2 uh, invite anymore. So uh, we are just going to be uh, content with the day 1 world's invite as every single year. So uh, for that being uh yeah with that being said we're gonna be talking about the uh prediction here so this is my personal prediction if your prediction is different let me know in the comments down below and in a couple of days we'll see if these predictions will come true so first of all i also made a tier list for uh, neic and i also made uh yeah a top 10 best decks already so definitely check those videos out uh, because these are going to be uh, very impactful for NEIC. Maybe you're uh, having some last minute changes. Maybe you still don't know what to play at NEIC. Well, this might give you an insight. And I'm also going to be talking about what you could expect day one of the NEIC. The biggest Western tournament in history. So, as a no one surprise, this is actually the uh, yeah list uh, based on the play.limulistcg.com data. So uh, with all online tournaments being played here and there, we see that, of course, Gardevoir reigns supreme as the best deck in format, as the, actually the most played deck, and uh, for good reason, because Iono and Super Rod definitely helped out. Followed up by Lost Box, then Chim Pao, Fusion Mew, Lost Box, Tina, and then there's also Arc Piles, Arc Tina, Arc uh, with uh, Vulpix, Duraludon, etc. Even with Umbreon, there's Single Strike Lugia and Colorless Lugia, so there's going to be uh, a debate which version is going to be more popular. I personally think the Single Strike version is better. Then we have Mew with DTE, and then uh, yeah, others like Arc Dura, Tinglu, and uh, Rapid Strike Intellion Box. So, also, Tinglu is currently still banned on TCG Live. They're actually going to be fixing it today, which is going to be super good. But also takes into account why it is less popular. Because, yeah, at one point you can, like, for, like, two weeks in a row, you cannot play the deck. So it might be even better than people give it credit for. With that being said, uh, let's talk about uh, Gardevoir EX. Will it be that 30% meta share deck that we've had with Fusion Strike Mew when it first came out? With stuff like Palkia V-Star from Astral Radiance when it first came out? or stuff like, of course, uh, Lugia V-Star in the Silver Tempest format, where it got so dominant, being clearly the S-tier deck, that, uh, yeah, we're gonna be seeing a 30% mana share. I don't think so. Personally, Gardevoir is a great deck, has not a lot of uh, bad matchups, but Radiant Greninja and uh, Sableye keep it down from being good. There's so many ways to counter Gardevoir. You can go for Path to the Peak and Iono, you can go for Radiant Greninja Snipe turn 2, you can go for Sableye spreading with the help of Halucha to take down 2 rolls, there's Echoing Horn, there's so many things that could uh, go wrong for Gardevoir that it's not a tier S deck, but simply uh, yeah, a tier 1 deck. And there's a lot of tier 1 decks that are very similar like that. So even though it's going to be very popular, I actually predict that it only will be a 22% meta share. So 22% of the playing field will be Gardevoir. That's my uh, prediction. So I'm actually did some statistics here and there. Followed up closely by Lost Buck with with 19% meta share. That is my prediction because these are clearly the best and strongest decks in the format, and uh, for good reason. They uh, they have like a very great matchup spread, and they are going to be very popular. Why could people not say like uh, the numbers could be higher? 
while people are afraid of uh, tying. Tying is dying, of course, that's uh, uh, something that people say all the time, but it is true. You can go 5-0-4 in a tournament, but as soon as you lose one, these ties become very bad. So, you don't want to be tying, so uh, a, a true skill that people could have at NAIC is scooping when the time is right. Like I say, this is unwinnable, instantly scoop, or you have a bad hand. Uh, during game two, you already won the first one. You can try to stall it out or you just... Yeah, it depends on when you can scoop at the right time uh, to make sure that these decks will perform well. Or you can just uh, win one uh, game and then, yeah, we'll see if you have enough time to, for, for the rest of the games. Either way, that will be a win or a tie. So that's... I think the tie rate will be super high. We've seen in the Puerto Rico special event that the tie rate was insane. Will that be uh, similar? Who knows? There's 2,000 masters battling it out. So uh, there's definitely going to be some ties here and there. So... Yeah, 22% meta share for Gardevoir, 19% meta share of Lost Box. That could be like uh, Sable's Art, uh, Kyogre Build, so many different versions of Lost Box. I'm grouping them all together, 19%. Then I think the third most popular deck will be Lugia V-Star for the reason that there are two versions. There's a Single Strike version and there's the Colorist version with uh, Weird Ear and uh, the Snorlax with the Thumping Store. Like, combine them both and you get a 14% meta share in my opinion. So that's gonna be the third most popular deck uh, in my opinion. There's also Mew Max, both versions DTE Fusion. I think the Fusion build will be more popular as it comes with Ice Q and uh, that has an uh, answer against the Spirit Tombs. Also, yeah, talking about Spirit Tomb, will Gardevoir play Spirit Tomb? Will Lost Box play Spirit Tomb? Who knows? There are a lot of decks could be playing Spirit Tomb and uh, a lot of people that uh, pure, purely the, the base their deck decision on playing online will be very uh, disappointed to know that Spirit Tomb was banned, so they haven't tested against Spirit Tomb, which could mean that Spirit Tomb could be a su surprise element in this tournament. So I think 11% from UV Max seems right. Then some Arc Piles, 10% in my opinion. 10% for the Arc Piles, we have uh, Arc Tina being the most popular one, probably around like, uh, I don't know, 7%, but if you combine them all, 10%. So the other percentage are uh, Arc Dura versions, Arc Dura Vulpix, Arc Dura Umbreon, so uh, Arc is our Dactyl Klefki, so Arc Piles, 10%. Then Chen Pao, the new deck, it is now currently ranked third uh, for popularity over at play.mlstg.com, uh, but it's just because of that it is popular. It is popular, it is new, people want to be playing with the new toys, it always happens like that, but I think it's going to be landing at the 9% meta share. Then Lost Box Tina did really well over in Japan uh, and a lot of these tournaments, but uh, in the West it is not performing that well, even though it gets Jet Energy. Super Rod, uh, I think it's only going to be stranding at uh, the number, uh, yeah, I would say 6th most popular deck or something. 8% meta share for Lost Tina and then others counting it at uh, 7%. So, that's probably be my prediction. Uh, let's hope uh, I'm right on this. So, if you are playing in day 1 of the meta share, uh, you're actually going to be seeing a lot of these decks. So, in my opinion, you might see up to 3 Guard of Wars. That is not an under, uh, underestimating. Uh, like, you're probably gonna be seeing three Gardevoirs, two Lost Boxes. That's already five of your matches. You're gonna be seeing one or two Lugia, then uh, a Muvi Max, an Arc Pal, and a Chim Pal. Seems about like what you could expect. Maybe sometimes a Lost Tina as well. If you are, of course, playing in a tournament, there's 2,000 players, there's a good chance. Round one, you see Ting Lu. Round one, you see Rapid Box, or round one, you see Maridon. I don't know if these decks will convert that well into day two, but your day one meta share should be focused on beating Gardevoir, beating Lost Box, beating Lugia, and Mew. All the rest, you can just say like, eh, I'm not gonna be taking against this and that, but these are gonna be the four decks you need to count, uh, take it into account, you need to, uh, yeah. Attack against like Lugia, Mew, Lost Box, Gardevoir. If you can win against all of those, you're probably gonna be do doing very well at the tournament. Chim Pao is a yeah difficult one. I don't know how popular it will be, but uh, I probably wouldn't tech for Chim Pao just yet. So uh, yeah, this is my meta prediction. If we take a look at uh, another website, TrainerHill.com, you can see a lot of data. So uh, let's just uh, dive into this data all together, so you guys can uh, follow along at home. It is actually going to be a matchup spread. So we can take a look at uh, which deck has the best matchup spread in the world. If I were to be playing uh, in NEIC, I probably would go for Gardevoir. Because Gardevoir has, of course, it has a target on its back, but it feels so good to play. We draw a lot of cards with Refinement Curlia, Radiant Greninja, you have Iono to punish opponents. If you can sequence very well and if you know what you're doing, you're going to be doing very well with Gardevoir. Just be careful of the mirror matches. I think Shining Arcana plays a, a, a crucial role in that. Can people attack ta against Gardevoir? Yes, they can put in Box of Disaster, Panic Mass, they can have more paths, etc. But 
we'll see how it goes. If you have a consistent deck, you should be alright. So, matchup spread wise, uh, the first one uh, that we see here is Arctina. Arctina has a very good matchup spread. It has a, a terrible movie max matchup, but uh, you can fix that with a Spirit Tomb. So uh, that's going to be helping out quite a bit, although the fusion build is still very hard. All the rest of the matchups looks pretty good to me. You have 50 or more, uh, and Lugia being uh, one of your worst matchups. So uh, yeah, because you're playing a high amount of path against Shin Pao, you could also surprisingly do well with Path Judge. So Arctina, if you don't want to be thinking too much in the tournament, play Arctina. You can even tack into one one Flying Pika, but I personally wouldn't do that because a lot of these lists are playing Luxury and the Reversal Energy. Then Chim Pao, uh, there seems to be uh, having a bad matchup against Mew v Max, which makes sense because Mew, of course, does compact with uh, yeah the way to KO your Chim Pao turn one going first. Uh, actually, if they go second, they're going to be knocking out your Chim Pao. They have Echoing Horn. It's going to be very bad regardless. And then Lost Boxina also doesn't seem to be doing that well for uh, Chen Pao. So Chen Pao struggles against Lost Boxes and uh, Fusion Mew. So that's going to be uh, things you can probably not fix. You can add in Spirit Tomb. You can add in Drapion if you want to. But uh, if you are a great player, you might actually surprise people. Then Fusion Mew also has some very great matchup spread, to be honest. Being uh, the best, uh, the worst matchup being uh, Lost Box. So, of course, they have the Kyogre, sometimes they have the Drapion, sometimes they have the Sky Seal Stone, sometimes they don't. Then we have Gardevoir. Gardevoir has uh, like 50 50s across the board, but uh, because Gardevoir sometimes has the issue to have a very bad opening hand, it is uh, having some lower results here. And again, Lost Box being its least favorable matchup of the bunch. Uh, makes sense because Rating Range and Sable are very hard to deal with. Giratina Lost Zone Box also comes, like this format is super healthy because like, look at these numbers. There's like a lot of 50-50s across the board. It's not clearly a one best deck out of the format that can, comes out of nowhere. Gudra. Okay, Gudra has some terrible time against uh, the Tina hype. Tina and the Chen Pao's are actually eating up Gudra, so you have to be careful of that. There's Lost Box, has some great matchups across the field, to be honest. Uh, the worst one being, uh, let's see here, Lugia. Lugia could be uh, difficult if they have the perfect setup, if they can collapse away their two prizers, if they come with Radiant Serena, it's gonna be super difficult. Then uh, Lugia itself is also such a 50-50 deck, but loses, uh, yeah, it actually has a bad matchup against the Gudra because it plays so many temples and stuff, but Gudra's not that popular, so yeah, these are all very great choices. I cannot like say which deck uh, comes out of the bunch. You see Movie Max also having these. Uh, this is the DTE build, by the way, and the the worst matchup for that actually is uh, the Lost Box again. So Miraidon uh, has some bad matchups against Mew. Has bad matchups against Lugia with Stone Journeys. Had a bad matchup against almost anything in the format. So I would currently uh, not play Miraidon, although Miraidon did well uh, in the uh, yeah Asian World. I think it was the Korea Championships, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, uh, it's your choice. Uh, this is my prediction. Gardevoir best second format. We'll see the most amount of play, followed up by Lost Box, Lugia, and Mew. And these are the decks you have to beat. And uh, as meta prediction, you'll be seeing three Gardevoir, two Lost Box, one to two Lugia, a Mew, an Arc Pal, and a Chim Pao. And that's going to be your day one. So the best of luck to everybody playing an NEIC. Let me know which uh, yeah prediction you got right. Let me know your predictions down below. It's going to be a nice way to, of course, predict what's going to be happening tomorrow. And I'm super excited to be uh, watching the NEIC. Have yourself a fantastic rest of your day. This was WCCG here, and I'm signing out. And uh, yeah, if you guys uh, haven't noticed already, you can uh, yeah subscribe for more daily content. Check out our sponsors. Links down below. And uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow for more Pokemon TCG Madness. I'm out. Peace.